Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Dries van Stevens. I'm a product owner here at Ultimo, and I'm your host for today's webinar about the new features we've been developing for our work permits module. Um, if you have any questions during the webinar, please put them in the chat and we'll take some time to answer your questions at the end of the webinar. Let's have a look at the agenda for today. There's only three topics. First, I want to tell you something more about why we decided to um, develop these new features for the work permit module. And next to that, of course, I want to show you what we have been developing. And last but not least, I want to tell you something more about when you may expect these new features in your environment. Let's start with why. Um, the Ultimo work permits module um, has been there for about a decade by now, and it's been used by a lot of customers. Um, first, a lot of customers in our home base, the Benelux, but during the years also um, more and more customers uh, in from other countries outside our home market have been using the work permits module. Um, we've received a lot of feedback during the years, a lot of positive feedback, but also a lot of suggestions to improve uh, market requirements, feedback, questions. And if we look at all the feedback we gathered over the years, um, we, identified, we identified some topics that we want to, uh, wanted to improve. Um, first topic um, is the fact that at the moment it's not possible to, to differentiate the content of the permit. Um, depending on the type of work you are performing. So sometimes you're performing hot work, working at height, or something else, and sometimes you really want to alter the content of the permit based on the type of work you uh, have to perform. Um, so we want to provide a solution for that. Second one um, is a possibility to differentiate the content of your permit based upon the location where you're working because sometimes when you're operating in multiple countries, there is specific le legislation for one country that's not applicable for another country. So also there you want to be able to, to tailor the permit to the specific situation you are in and to the specific uh, local legislation you may encounter. And the last topic is the flexibility of the permit print. Um, as most of you know, it's not allowed to customize the permit print, but we want to offer some possibilities uh, to make it more flexible with extra options and settings um, we want to introduce. And over the years, we've also received some suggestions for smaller optimizations, and there we also decided to uh, develop some of those suggestions that have been made by uh, multiple customers over the past years. So if we look at what we have made, um, there are some really nice new features we developed. Um, let's look at the first topics we identified. So the possibility to differentiate based on the type of work you are performing and the possibility to differentiate based upon the location where you are working. Um, those two together um, made us decide to offer the possibility to define selection lists um, per type and per site. So we introduce um, permit types. So a permit type that can be hot work, working at height, confined space, and so on. And for those types, you can indicate on a selection list that it's applicable only for that type of work. So you can create a specific selection list for flammable materials, for example, where you can um, indicate that it's only used for hot work permits. I mean, more or less the same for sites. So you can indicate on a selection list that it's only applicable for specific sites. So that way you can create specific sele selection lists that are only applied in certain sites in a certain country where you have special legislation that you have to follow. And for that, you can create a specific selection list that's only applied for those locations. Um, we do understand that these two extra dimensions make it a little more complex to um, set up your uh, work permits. So 
I'm going to show you how this will work. Um, so let's start with the current situation. So I have this simplified situation here where we have um, six selection lists. So in the current situation, all these selection lists are always added to all permits. Um, and if you want to keep on working that way, that's perfectly possible also when the new features are released, but you will have the option to um, differentiate the content, for example, based on the type of work. So let's say, for example, um, the selection list number four is specifically for hot work, something about flammable materials, for example, and selection list five is specific for um, electrical permits. Then we also want to be able to indicate that a certain selection list is only applicable for a certain site. So we can say, for example, that selection list two is only applicable for site B and selection list three is only applicable for site A and C and selection list four is also for site B. So in this case, selection list four will only be applied for a hot work permit in site B. So in other, in other sites, it won't be applied. So let's take a look at some examples. Yeah. First example is a general permit, so no specific type applied, um, and it's for site A. So which selection list will be applied in that case? Of course, selection list one, because it's not linked to a site, it's not linked to a type, so it's always applied. Then selection list three in this case, because it's um, linked to site A and selection list six, again, because it's not linked to a specific type or a specific site, so it's always applied. Then if we look at, um, for example, electrical permit for site C, it will be, it will have the following selection lists on it. Of course, again, selection list one and six, because those are always applied. Then selection list three, because it's a permit for site C and selection list five, because it's an electrical permit. Last example is the hot work permit for site B. Um, the selection list one and six again, because they are always applied. Selection list two, because it's specific for site B and selection list four, because it's specific for site B and hot work. So only hot work for site B will get selection list four. All right, let's have a look how we can set that up in Ultimo. Um, first of all, we go to the master data. There we go to uh, HSE, the work permits. There we have our selection list, but let's first set up our work permit types. So I have a list of work permit types. You can set this up using the master data setup where we have this default list of possible permit types, but you can also enter your own. So if we look at the hot work permit type, we have a possibility to add a symbol that will be printed on the printout as well. And on the right, we have an overview of the uh, type specific selection list and uh, the permit templates on which the type is used. Let's look at another one for the electrical work permit type. I want to add a symbol as well. I have a nice symbol over here and I can add it so that will be printed on the print of the work permit as well. All right, um, then we move on to the selection list. So I prepared a selection list for flammable materials over here. Um, I can indicate that this selection list is only applicable for a certain permit type, hot work in this case. So I select hot work over here. And next to that, um, I can also indicate that this selection list is um, only applicable for um, certain sites. So I go to the tab sites. If I do not enter any sites here, it will be applied for all sites, only for the type of work, of course. But now let's say I add a site Amsterdam here and also site London. So this selection list will only applied, be applied for site London, Amsterdam when it's hot work. Then, of course, I have to um, approve this selection list. So I 
things, the selection list, and then I can move on to the permit itself. So I prepare the permit over here. So at the moment, when I uh, check on the measures for the issuer, I can see that the selection list for flammable materials is not there yet because I did not indicate any permit types over here. So I'm going to add the hot work type now. I can add up to five different types on the same permit. So the hot work type is now added. And if we go check again, I can see that the selection list for flammable materials is added and I can check some boxes over here. All right. As you can see, also something new we created. Um, we have the possibility to choose whether to print or not print the gas measurements on the permit print. Uh, let's leave it on for now. And now I can um, request my permit. Okay, so now it's requested. Then we're gonna process the permit. Just look it up. There it is. So before I print a permit, there's also a new a possibility to choose the language when you print a permit. Only the languages you're licensed for. And here we have the possibility to make the print of the cost measurements uh, optional. So now I uncheck that box. And OK, I'm not going to print the task risk assessment for now. So now I'm going to get a print without the gas measurements printed. All right. Um, before I move on into detail to the to the printout, just a recap of what we've seen so far. So we've seen the possibilities to create a type specific selection list and to indicate um, and to indicate specific sites on a selection list. And now we can move on to the printout of the work permit. So if you look at the printout of the work permit, um, let me zoom in a little bit. So here we can see the hot work type with the symbol that is printed on the permit. So we can add up to five types. They will be shown next to each other here. Um, over here, we have a QR code. So that's an option a setting. You can choose to use the barcode or the QR code. Then over here at the top, that's also new. Um, you have the possibility to choose to show the description of the permit in the title of the print. So before we only had the work permit high risk or low risk in the title. Now it's possible to choose to have the description of the permit in the title as well. Then there are some other new things in the print. Um, one of the main issues on the print have, has always been the, and the lack of space on the print because there's a lot of information that we want to fit onto one, one page. Um, so as I showed you, we made the printing of the gas measurements demo optional. So normally we had here a very big space that was occupied by the gas measurements table. Also, when you didn't have to do any gas measurements, um, it was always there. So now you have the option to not print it and we create more space for more selection lists and options. Next to that, we also made the possibility to um, not print selection lists that are not applicable. So if you look over here, this selection list is actually indicated that it's not applicable. From now on, you have the possibility to indicate on the selection list in the master data that you do not want to print it when it's not applicable. So in that case, all, all this will be um, will be gone and you will create again more space for other things. Something else we added, it's a small adjustment, um, the lockout tag outlines. Um, when lockout tag out applies, until now there was only this checkbox. And now we also added the reference to the IDs of the Loto request. So it's easy to, to find them back. Um, I think that's about it for this version of the print. Um, as you know or may not know, we also have a double-sided version of the print where there is already more space. 
Um, but we created even more space on that print because um, we made it that way that it can grow yeah, endlessly in, in theory. So it was two, two sides that were printed. Now it can be three, four, five, as many pages as you need. And also the selection list options itself, they can grow over more lines. So until now, it was always uh, limited to one line per selection list item. Now, depending on the length of the text, it will grow over more lines. So you will always see the complete content of those selection list items. Then something else we added um, is a possibility to print an image on the back of the print. Um, you can indicate what image that should be on the level of the site or on a permit template. So when you put it on the permit template, it will always take that image. If there is no image on the permit template, we take the image from the site. Um, yeah, it's called image on the back side of the print. Um, but for the multi-pager, it's, yeah, it's just an extra page that is added at the end. So that can be the third page, the fourth page, depending on how large uh, it is. Um, and this image on the back can, yeah, can actually be used for a lot of things. Um, most common wishes we've heard are the possibility to add a last minute risk assessment, um, a map of the plant where you're working, some general safety instructions. Um, we also heard to wish to add a list where you can enter uh, or where you can write down names of people who uh, enter or exit a confined space. So it can be anything that fix, fits on a page. <laughs> then we also added the possibility to use the permit print in our mobile solution in Ultimo Go. Um, unfortunately, it's not possible um, to just print the work permit um, as we're used to in the desktop version. So we have to make it in two steps. So first of all, you can generate the work permit document. And after it's generated, a new file will be attached to the permit. And there you can download the permit document in Ultimo Go. So that way we make it possible to, to see the complete content of the permit also in the mobile version. And last but not least, um, it's also possible from now on to create a follow-up permit from a closed work permit. So this button, create a follow-up work permit, uh, until now it was only uh, present on the process permit screen, but it's now also added on the overview of permit screen where you get the possibility to also create a follow-up permit for a closed work permit. All right, so I think we can uh, wrap up. We identified the different uh, topics. Um, we made the possibility to differentiate in the content of your permit um, based on the type of work. So you can create permit types, you can add symbols to them, you can indicate on a selection list that it's a type specific selection list so that it's only added to the permit at the moment that that type of work is applicable. We created the possibility to differentiate based on local legislation. So you can create selection lists that are only applied for certain sites in certain countries. So that way you can use that selection list to do some extra measures or extra checks that are only applicable in that country based on local legislation. We made the permit print more flexible in different ways. Um, and we also did some other small optimizations. <laughs> All right. Let's look at when you will be able to enjoy these new features. And I think I have some good news because you won't have to wait too long anymore. Um, first of all, the permit, the new features for the work permit module um, are included in the work permits model. So it's not an extra option. Um, it's all part of the work permit module, but this work permit model is um, optional for premium and professional customers. And for enterprise, it's 
included in the package. Um, if all goes according to plan, the feature should be available in the test environment next week and the week after that in production. There's one exception for um, the permit types because for the permit types, you get um, a new possibility on the permit screen. So any end user that will create a new permit will have the possibility to add permit types, but there won't be any permit types. So that's why we decided to uh, turn that one off for, um, for existing customers. So if you're already using permits, the part for the permit types is uh, disabled by default. If you want to start using it, you can enable it uh, in the application element tree in the configuration tool. All right. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, let's have a look if there are any questions. I'll give you some more time to ask questions. I can see there are some questions already. I'm not sure if I completely understand that question. Um, the work permit layout can be adjusted slightly to your own wishes. Can you give examples of what the possibilities are? Um, yeah, well, I think we showed the possibilities. Um, you can choose um, to have the description in the title or not. You can choose to have a barcode or a QR code. Um, you can, you can uh, influence the selection lists that are shown on the permit. Um, once they are not applicable, you can indicate that they do not have to be printed. Um, you can add the image on the back of the print. So then that are that that are the most uh, important ones. Okay, let's have a look at some other questions. Um, possible to have multiple symbols. Yeah, well, you can have multiple permit types on the same permit. So in that way, you will have multiple symbols as well. So it's not possible to have multiple symbols on the same um, permit type, but you can add up to five uh, permit types to one permit. Then there's a question about the process, whether a job can be activated without Activating the permit, no, that's that's not possible. Because we you, you really need to have the permit before you can start working, because that's actually the reason why we have these permits to um, to guarantee the safety. So the permit should be active before we can start working on the job. Then there's a question about the format of the print. Is it only in A3 or it's also possible in A4? Yeah, the permits prints are uh, made to be printed on A3. You can print them on A4, but it's really small and it's, it's almost not readable. And to make and we have not made a, an A4 version as well, because that should have should be on multiple pages as well. The print of the work written to work permit in different languages, also Italian. Well, that's based on the languages you have in your application. So it will be available in the languages that you have your, in your application. And um, of course, if you um, have your master data multilingual as well, you will have to make sure that you uh, make it multilingual and you fill have all the master data in in all the languages that you want to use to print. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, 
Um, that's a question about the mobile app. Uh, any changes when it's moved to the Maui platform? Um, no, at the moment there are no changes planned to the to the mobile version. Um, all right. I think uh, there are some questions I didn't completely understand, but um, I'll contact the ones who ask those questions and then we can have a chat about those questions. Um, I want to thank you for joining today and um, see you next time. Bye.